Welcome to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make these super cute hanging reindeers. You can just pop in a couple of these candy canes to create some antlers, stick on some beautiful little googly eyes, a little pom-pom and is absolutely perfect as a little stocking filler or just to hang on your tree. So before we get started, don't forget to hit that notification bell and of course, hit the subscribe button so you get notified as soon as a new crochet pattern or stitch tutorial becomes available. Let's run through the materials that we're going to need to be able to create this little cutie. You are of course going to need some candy canes. It doesn't matter which candy canes you've got, we're going to measure them as we make to make sure that they fit our little reindeer. Now I'm using these little, little craft pom-poms, so these are literally just little balls of fluff um, but you can of course crochet a little pom-pom if you want to or use your pom-pom maker. Now, I've also got these they are self-adhesive but they are not very sticky so these are little googly eyes I don't know what else they're called I got these off of Amazon and these are the 10 millimeter or one centimeter eyes the reason I wanted such big eyes on my reindeer was because his nose is so big and the other ones I've got are about, must be smaller than three millimetres and they're just a little bit too small. You can even hear them jingling. So we need some googly eyes and a pom-pom and we need, of course, a couple of candy canes. Actual material wise, what I'm going to be using on this crochet pattern is two strands of um, DK size three weight yarn. So that's the equivalent of chunky weight or bulky weight yarn. So if you haven't got DK weight, but you've got some chunky or you've got some Aran, you can just double it up and adjust your hook size accordingly. Now, if you're using two strands of DK or a chunky weight yarn, I would recommend a five millimeter crochet hook. It's an old hook, it's wearing off. Um, but if you're using chunky, you might want to use a six millimeter. Um, so if you're using Aran weight and doubling that up, you might like to use a six millimeter hook, but either way, it should be fine. So we're going to start, or oh, you are going to need a, a little stitch marker. You might not need one, but it'll make life a little bit easier. So we start by making a slip knot on and popping that onto our hook. So I'm using two strands of DK or size three yarn. And I'm going to be using US terms throughout this pattern, but giving you the UK at the same time. It's only one stitch in this, which is chains and single crochet in US terms, double crochet in UK terms. We're going to start by making a chain of seven. So we just yarn over with both strands, pull through. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And what we're going to actually do is work on both sides of our chain. So we don't work in that first chain, remembering that one doesn't count, we skip that one, and we're just gonna go underneath the top loop, picking up both strands of yarn. So you can see that there are, there are two there, I promise. And we just make our single crochet in US terms, double crochet in UK terms. So we insert the hook, bring that hook up, yarn over and pull through both loops. And we work a single crochet into each chain along. So we've already worked into that one, just under that first loop of the chain, making sure we've got both loops of the yarn. And work another oops, single crochet and work all the way down to the back to the start of our chain, working one single crochet into each stitch along, sorry it's a chain, each chain along. When we get to the end we're going to work back along but we're not going to work into this one again. So I'm going to hold my tail against my work. You can see we've worked into this end one so we're just going to work straight into that next chain. So we're working on the other side of the chain and I'm holding my tail against to work over it and just working another single crochet. You can see where they're crossed, we're gonna insert our hook just underneath that and work another single crochet. There's the cross, so we just go underneath that. 
there's another one work under there and then we're just going to work one more in this end here which is kind of where we started Oop. I knew that yarn was a bit pesky there we go so this is where we started if we turn it upside down so we've got one two three four one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven stitches around our chain and what we're going to do is we're going to instead of slip stitching to join we're just going to work in a continuous spiral all the way up so we don't slip stitch to join we insert the hook under that first stitch making sure we grab all the loops and just work our next single crochet. So if you want to, to mark the start of the round, you can just pop a stitch marker under that first stitch once you've made it. And then we're just gonna continue into the next stitch, working one single crochet into each stitch back to where we started, where that stitch marker is. Now what you will find is it has a tendency to want to go inside out. So there's a next stitch. Oops. There's our next stitch. Now this one is where it gets a little bit tricky. So we're looking for the, the, the stitch that we normally work into. So where it was sat before, it looked a bit like that. We don't want to do anything to do with that at the back. Just push that down. You see the stitches at the top there. We just insert our hook under the loops of the stitch and work our next. There's our next stitch again. You can see all that stuff at the back. Ignore that for now. If you aim for where the stitch is going into the next stitch, it's a little bit easier to insert your hook and work the next stitch. My yarn's coming a bit close there. There we go. And we just keep working into each stitch around. There we go. So we are one more to do. And we should still have 11 stitches. So we've got one. Can't see in this lighting. Turn it the right way out. There we go. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So that is pretty much the whole pattern. We are just going to continue. I'm just going to point out if you've never known before, but we're going to make sure that our ends stay on the inside because now what's going to happen is as we continue around. We just keep working. We don't slip stitch to join any of the rounds, but you can see that it brings, oops, the joy of using the equivalent of scrap yarn. There we go. It just brings the sides up, but it creates a pocket rather than a circle by working straight into the chain without increasing it on either end. It doesn't look like it. I'm holding it like that. So you can see it's starting to create a pocket. Now, if you wanted to make this opening, this is wide enough for my two candy canes. But for instance, say you wanted to make it wider to start, you just make your starting chain longer. So I'm just going to break everybody else's hearts. Just going to undo all of this um, and show you how to kind of judge how many chains you're going to need to start with so with your you would literally just make a chain so let's do three four five six seven we know seven is enough for two candy canes if we did ten if you had an item i'm trying to find anything else you might like to gift it's the only thing i can think of hang on let's say for instance we want to wrap up this mouse from my computer we would just make sure that the number of chains is wide enough and then we do one more. That's it. And then we'd work as we did before. So we'd work into the second chain from hook 
working one single crochet into each stitch across. Probably should have chosen a smaller item. All the way down to the bottom of the chain. Then when you get back to where your slip knot is, you just turn it around and work where those little crosses are. So you would literally just work underneath the crosses. I hope that's clear enough that you can see the cross. So that you're working into the other side of the chain and you just repeat what we did. So you just keep working around. And then regardless of what size your object is, it will fit in the pocket. So you just keep going around. I'm going to do another few stitches so we can see. So you could also do this with gift cards and things like that, because it creates quite a nice padded, especially with the double strands of the DK. It creates a nice kind of padded little envelope. Just going to give me another idea, but we'll come back to that. It is a, it's a little bit tricky on that second round making sure that you work just into the stitches. So there we have the start of our pocket. So you can see, kind of, that it's gonna just work up around the width of our mouse in this instance. So I hope that helps make it more adjustable so you can do any sizes you want. So let's, let me quickly go back and I will meet you in a second. And um, we're going to keep working those rounds, okay? As if by magic, I'm back to where I started, <laughs> or left you as it were. And I'm just gonna keep working around. So what we're looking for is, just in case you wanted to make a different size or a different depth of a pocket, I'm not suggesting that you're going to be popping a computer mouse into any <laughs> of these at any point. But say you're doing a, uh, someone asked me to make this adjustable for a chocolate bar in the Facebook group. The joy of being in the community. If you haven't joined us, there is a link below. Do come on over and say hi and show us your projects. But what we're looking for is the depth to match our candy canes. Now, on average, for these candy canes, it's been about maybe 10 or 11 rounds altogether. But I will be honest and say that I haven't actually counted it as I've made it. I've just kind of kept putting my candy canes in until it's reached the height that I want it to get to. And these are obviously a lovely, quick and easy make. If you're used to um, the US single crochets, then yes, it is a lovely, quick make. The joy of using a five millimetre hook and of course the extra, the doubled up yarn means it does work up really really quickly so if you are after some really simple quick and easy Christmas gifts just as like a little kind of stocking filler or just some nice handmade decorations for the tree this really does make a perfect little project and of course because it involves a glue gun <laughs> it doesn't have to you can just use normal glue but I like to turn my glue gun on as often as possible. I'm sure I have actual scars from the number of burns I've had, but you know, it's all good fun. So you can just periodically check the depth of your pocket. I still have quite a way to go with mine. Um, and just keep going until you reach the height that you want. So once you've reached the height that you want, just hit pause for now and I will meet you when we are ready to work our little hanging chain and then we're going to add on our extras at the end. So hit pause and then come back when you're ready to make your hanging. So I've actually done, if I count from the top down, I've done 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. And what I've done is I've stopped at the moment just on the edge. So obviously because it does go a bit flatter. And I'm just going to work my way around to roughly the middle of one of the sides, just like that. And from here, I'm going to go into that same middle stitch again and just do a little slip stitch as if we were gonna finish our project, 
but instead to create, I mean, you can do if you want to, but if you want to create the little hanging at the back, it is very simple. So once you've done your slip stitch, you chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we just slip stitch back into where we slip stitched before. What I would say is make sure that your this chain does not get twisted you know just make sure you're not crossing over the back of it or anything like that you should just simply create another slip stitch like that with your lovely scissors which i forgot to tell you to have to hand just snip that and pull that the whole way through pull it nice and tight and there you have your hanging in the middle now obviously this is the the only ends we need to weave in so what we're going to do is just put my hook my needle once i've put the ends through the needle i'm going to go all the way through back to front so that my tails are on the back and i'm just going to weave them in you can tie a knot if you want to and just kind of hide it but i'd like to just weave my ends in a little bit so that they're a little bit secure, not a lot, just a little, because it just makes that hanging a little bit neater from the front and the back as well. So just go through a few stitches, backwards and forwards three times. So that's half away. We'll go another way. And then we'll go back the other way. Oh, just for extra security. I like to really make sure they're never going to come out again. There we go. And then we can just make sure they're all nicely, neatly hidden. I'm just going to snip those, oh dear, snip those off at the base. Poof, they can go. Now, there were some ends right at the bottom here. If you worked over your ends, like I did, she says, you can just snip them off. They had a slip knot in there anyway. I've just moved my camera. There we are. So we're going to turn that right side out again. And quickly put my glue gun on. There we go. That's all plugged in. And there we have our plain reindeer. Now you could, of course, do this any colour you wanted to. And you can, of course, put anything inside that you would like. I think these really do make the cutest of antlers and make it a bit more giftified as well. But of course, there is definitely some things missing. So we're done with the yarn. We have one eye there. What did I just do with the other eye? Don't worry. I have a few more. <laughs> so let's get another eye out there. There we go. So you can kind of work out on the front where you want your eyes. You could have your eyes quite low down with your little nose, or you can put them right up the top and you can then put, you can make them a bit wonky so he looks a bit kooky and create your little reindeer. I am gonna use my glue gun to secure them because even with this sticky backing, they're not that secure and I get worried about little bits and little hands. It's nowhere near hot enough, but it will be fine. So just put, you just need a tiniest amount of glue. You want to ignore those little strands and then kind of push them on where you want them to go. So it's the tiniest little amount of glue that you need for these. I try and get mine quite close together. And there we go again, burning myself. There we go. And then exactly the same for the pom-pom. You're just gonna stick his nose on. I'm gonna make it a little bit lower, but just a tiny, tiny amount. I don't want any of these stragglers here. Oh, it just keeps coming, doesn't it? There we go. Because we don't want any glue showing and just kind of position his nose where you'd want him to go. And that completes your little reindeer. I really hope you've enjoyed this little crochet tutorial to make your own little reindeer. 
And of course, if you do change them and put different things inside, do let me know. I would love to see your finished projects as always. Now, I hope that you have enjoyed this. Please give this video the thumbs up if you have and come on over to the Facebook group and show me your finished makes. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, you can do that right now and you'll never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials again.